Great. Well, uh, welcome everyone to the fourth session of the Open Music Study Group. So we're going to just look at maquettes. And um, we've kind of been discussing beforehand about how, how little we really know uh, about maquettes. I mean, I've, I've certainly found the, the kind of the writings and the literature on maquettes to be very, very light. There's not a lot to kind of go on. And certainly for most of my um, uh, experience of maquettes has been just experimenting and kind of trying stuff out until it works. Um, so used have you got your, your patch yeah. there? To... Yeah, I will share my screen. So um, I will show you the one and only lonely example that I ever <laughs> tried to do. Which was, oh, you need to enable the sharing, Alan. Have I not got that uh, no, sharing options? Uh, oh, there it is, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. So um, let me double click. So I just made it because as a, as a way of getting to know the maquette system. And what I liked was the idea that so you can make a patch and then you can choose like this final object um, that you have. So I think this was a kind of, um, it had to do with ring modulation um, because I see I made some internal patch that did a ring modulation process. It's something from I, which I did a long time ago. And then you have this stamp out object and, and I was curious to see how it worked um so i suppose i mean the way i've used it until now is just like putting patches but i must say like for me i don't know if it's my computer or not but for example just the scrolling system it works so counter it, it doesn't move really or or to it it kind of only zooms and then I mm -hmm. completely get lost in the structure. So, so it was mainly the UI actually that I found very unpleasant to use. And maybe mm -hmm. because of that, I, I also in the way that, that it goes up until 100, but this 100 is a kind of total arbitrary number. It has no real musical meaning. Um, so it's it's probably just to have some space, but I I don't know why they put or I don't I was wondering whether this, the the numbers are meaning anything. I I guess the x axis is just the seconds, but then also when you enlarge, also voice objects suddenly by by making them smaller and bigger, you get really weird results. And after some frustrating um, tryouts, I just simply stopped uh, stopped trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the there's a way of if you right click in the macro, I think you can actually adjust your um, the sort of the x axis. Um, Somewhere, you know, here, or? if you even no if you're in the, just in the middle of the maquette, if you oh, right click, yeah. um, I think you can. You have the you ruler actually. Step one. Oh, maybe it's yeah. There's you can, you know, adjust the the units. Um, but I I I don't think yeah. I think the y axis. I I have no idea. I I've never really understood uh, what purpose they served other than just the kind of visual. <laughs> um, yeah. Because you see, you see uh, examples of maquettes where some of the things are kind of overlaid, and yeah. I, I yeah. think it's it doesn't seem to make any difference whether you know it's right above it or you know right on top of another. It seems to just purely be a making it look pretty. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I've I've never noticed. What what I what I understand is that like for example if you make a I'll just take my scratch mm -hmm. at, um like if you go to into the Murai library 
um, you see that the uh, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see that he has had actually a lot of um, like with the conversions, I think, or where is it? I don't remember anymore. Yeah, yes, like some things to 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 control his maquette somehow. So I guess mm -hmm. for him, at least it must have some function or some purpose. Otherwise, he wouldn't be making uh, like special objects to to control it. I guess. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm that's okay. that's where I am at. So nowhere actually. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna kill my screen and had uh, give it back to you. Uh, Alan. Sure. Sure. Hmm. Yes, I, I, I was uh, wondering, um, <clears throat> for me, the maquette object, when I saw the, uh, I, I told, uh, uh, sorry, Alan, for repeating a little bit, but no, it's no, for no. the recording. <laughs> uh, when I saw the first, I was um, a former user of uh, Patchwork, and uh, um, I, w I always uh, thought that Patchwork was uh, had a problem. I mean, to conceive a whole piece would be um, rather limited because the way you could, well you could do it but it was so much complicated that it would be better to write it by hand you know uh, writing down uh, the score would, would be easier um, so to prepare uh, materials uh, local materials or uh, rather uh, large structures but uh, more or less uh, sketched it was okay but not to think of all this. So when I saw the, the first time the object market, I thought, wow, <laughs> it, this is the solution. <laughs> well, but yeah. honestly, I never used it so much, but, but uh, I, I, I used the, the market object uh, to, um, to dispose uh, things and then to, um, uh, to gather all, all those uh, all those things, so to speak, and to um, and to use it uh, for uh, uh, more recipes in the sense that uh, um, well uh, there are one or two pieces of mine that the most uh, the, the 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 idea of uh, generation is not of so much. Uh, um, fully developed material, but the, on the opposite, uh, materials that are more or less static because they are pre-developed, uh, I mean, cells and uh, pages and things like that. And um, they, they appear in some points in time. So it's, the, it's their uh, 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 crossing that makes a sense of development. Uh, that, 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 that was in a, one, uh, a piece from the, middle 80s for two pianos um, and and i thought that when i i need to to write down that piece on finale uh, instead of transcribing the piece painfully uh, <laughs> fully um i i decided to do a thing a rather simple thing because it did interest to me that was to generate all the basic materials uh, and then to make a kind of um, super a super sequencer and in that sense the maquette was uh, was okay i don't recall very well uh, what i have done but i can maybe share with you um, some yeah. of the, the 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 things i i mean uh, let's let me see where i have uh, all those <laughs> things um well let me see <laughs> where is it okay so i will go to a uh, move maybe i'll share even my desktop it, it, it's okay. easier okay um so i don't know where is it uh, yeah. did i start it to share yeah no yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're, yeah we're, 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 oh we're, you see yeah. my uh, um well so Sorry, uh, you see my Zoom. Uh, yeah, yeah the, 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 Okay, <laughs> so this is my my um, uh, my new, <laughs> um, and I do it some. 
uh, well, this is uh, this was the the idea. As I remember it, I, I, I'm sorry I did not uh, add the possibility to to gather it uh, at all. So you you see you see here I think a maquette. Okay, but I don't use this maquette. Um, I, I use it here inside a patch. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, why why is that? Because in this patch in, uh, in this abstraction you see the maquette yeah. and then uh, you can choose uh, either poly either multisec the, the the coming out what was the idea the idea was just that all those materials as you see here uh, what you see here is that they have uh, time offsets this is a, an example it's not the complete thing so uh, the my the for me the important thing is that i could choose a rather uh, easy um, uh, how to 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 dispose things and then um what i was interested in was not in this point you see uh, this was not my uh, uh, i would say my problem i wanted to get them here you yeah. see Mm -hmm. So, as um, of course, uh, one of the strategies um, that I, I, I used was that uh, all materials would uh, have, if I wanted to, different, uh, different uh, MIDI channels, so that in the final gathering, I could uh, send them to different uh, channels and rework those materials either in finale or uh, another kind of editor just to dispose things uh, correctly. So this was uh, um, one of the, my, my uses uh, because the first times I used the, ma the maquette object, I had a problem and the problem, uh, sorry, I was, uh, I can uh, leave for a moment now. Uh, um, <laughs> my, my problem with the, the maquette uh, object, it was that every time I do a, a calculation, I would lose everything inside, so uh, so I, I uh, an evaluation. So I would prefer uh, to um, uh, charge uh, to feed the object market market through its inputs and not directly disposing mm -hmm. things. On the other end, what I was uh, very interested, but I never understood very well because, well, lack of training and formation and things like that, because the documentation, I don't know if nowadays it's a little bit better. No. But what I no. was, uh, well, <laughs> yes, because for me, what was very interesting, it was uh, uh, to see the Erma maquette, you know, and to see all those, uh, um, uh, joinings uh, between patch inside the market. Mm -hmm. yeah. This idea that uh, you can change uh, an object and uh, the, uh, all that change spreads for all the piece and and so, and so on. So I thought that uh, in that sense the market object could be very powerful, but unfortunately I never understood. Uh, you know, we you see. Um, if you, if you put uh, uh, no matter what object in, inside the maquette, you get uh, uh, many outputs and uh, things like that and inputs that you, <laughs> they are not very clear. Uh, clear documented. So for me, it was quite annoying, but uh, I felt that power of the maquette. So I, I start to use it in that sense. So I would prepare all materials, assign them a, an offset, or uh, a repeating uh, offset if you need to, and then to, to, to gather them in a, a maquette and then uh, capture them through the maquette to object uh, objects. So <laughs> it's, it's quite uh, uh, straightforward and very simple, so to speak, but uh, uh, very helpful because um, for me, uh, uh, open music is not the final uh, destination of the thing. Uh, so, uh, well, you need to do scores and um, produce sound materials. So it's a, it's a, a node in the in this network. So.
I don't know if this uh, helps to <laughs> or no it absolutely does it's uh, um, I think it's the the problem with the uh, you know the idea of the maquette is well it, it's the it's the it seems to be you know if you know what you're doing you can do these wonderful big things um but there seems to be a breakdown in sort of i don't know the knowledge of where how how do we get from <laughs> starting to mm -hmm. making these huge big maquettes and that's that's the, the issue that i've had it's mm -hmm. um you know it's the documentation it, it's probably uh, the same documentation that you were reading <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's been updated really no, um, no, because I, I think it's the same since uh, 6.0 or 6.1 or yeah it you know I, I think there's ago. yeah I mean there's a lot of it's it's kind of uh, I don't know whether it's maybe just um, you know obviously people because people don't know how, or, you know, we're not able to find the information to, to learn to use this feature. And then on a, as a result, no one takes an interest in it. And then the documentation falls behind and it's kind of a sort of a, you know, self-defeating in a way. Yeah. But we're yeah. going to change that. We're going to change that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, oh no! Yeah, uh, what were you going to say, Antonio? No, no. I, I was I, I was wondering. Yes, in that sense, that uh, uh, <laughs> it 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 could be interesting to understand a little bit more. Uh, in fact, how how, how it works, uh, of course. Um, it was just just that <laughs> the need to change that this, to change the thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even in a lot of the, the OM books um, where you, you know, because I, I tried to kind of read up on, you know, what other people were doing from the, you know, uh, from those open music books of chapters about patches. And even in them, there's, it's, uh, it, there's very little about here's how I'm interacting with the maquette and here's what I'm doing and yeah. I mean, I think, you know, one of the problems is that it's very difficult in, in a kind of academic article to kind of give an idea of how a composer interacts with their patch, or, you know, or the code in a way that's kind of, you know, nested sub patches upon sub patches are very hard <laughs> to, to demonstrate. Um, I, I'll share my screen and kind of, I'll give you a, yeah, yes. A view of what I've been trying to do. I mean, my, my starting point was, um, it was actually, I, uh, I was speaking to a friend uh, a couple of days ago. Um, she's an artist and she started talking about a, um, uh, uh, an exhibition that she's going to be doing. And she was talking about how she was going to be building some maquettes for it. And I was kind of taken back, but I was like, I'd never heard the, the word maquette really used <laughs> in the world before. And uh, I didn't even realize, I kind of, I think, you know, as musician in music, we, we steal our language from everyone. And I didn't even think that uh, maquette was uh, a term from the art world. And it's for sculptures, it's the preliminary sculpture for <laughs> I, I it was I, I can't believe it's it's one of the it's it's maquette's a word that I've always just associated with uh, open music and I didn't even realize it was a yeah, it's it's a standard term in architecture actually yes it's always yes. in architecture comes as well yes and and actually it it um for me it's somehow I I mean I I find it a very important aspect of um of the process of composition mm. to be able to hear a little bit in advance how it's going to sound. Yeah. I mean, there are, I know, I, 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 I haven't had to, because I'm, I'm mainly autodidactic as a composer, mm -hmm. um, but the little lessons I always had, uh, of, of, uh, that I've had 
that was always like the professor asked you to sit in front of a paper and to write ideas down that you have in your head. But I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, uh, my specialty is improvisation. And I know that many things can sound pretty, pretty far to a, to a rather far degree can sound alike. Mm -hmm. Like, um, for example, if I use my editor in Max, for example, with those samples, it is usually problems like, I know I hear kind of a muted brass sound in my head. And I'm just not sure whether it is a muted trumpet with this type of mute, or it is a trombone in a very high register with this type of mute, or it is a, maybe a core, maybe a horn with a stopped mute, but, but played a little different. I mean, I can imagine a stopped brass sound or a muted brass sound, but they still have like very fine um, differences in between. And I think for me, at least the same goes for harmony and timing. I mean, if you have like l rather large chords, it's, it's, um, it's this thing that maybe you change the position of one or two notes. Maybe this note will rather be in the bass or this one note will be rather on top. And I can, because I have, a, I have a very, very good, perfect pitch, I can, I can picture quite a lot of stuff in my head, but it is precisely these little details that for me have a huge influence on the architecture of the piece in general. And where I have, like, I'm, I'm, when I only do it on paper, I'm never sure whether it will mm. have this not whether it will sound more or less okay, because I can imagine that, but whether it will have the function mm -hmm. within the framework, like the way it relates to other materials. This is for me such an essential element of composition. The fact that you establish relationships between uh, materials. And for, Dink, I, I, for this, I think something like the maquette could be extremely useful and there, I think you 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 get into this wall of indeed, maybe a lot of people just doing this on paper, or or not enough people using it. I I don't know, but but I mean this is something I think, if you can do this with a maquette, you really can have the equivalent of a kind of three D try three D drawing. Like when you go now to an architect, they will not just show you the 2D plan on paper. They will also show you a kind of 3D rendering. And for me, yeah. the maquette is the equivalent of this kind of 3D rendering of what a piece in the exactly. end is supposed to look like. Yeah. And I think that's especially, I mean, I can't believe it took me so long to realize that that's what the maquette is the whole <laughs> and every other, you know, as you say, in architecture and art for sculptors, a maquette is a kind of the, the preliminary, the kind of the example um, to see, you know, as you say, to sort of test out the idea. I think the way open music works in the patches, you know, it's quite, um, you know, I think we talked, you know, when we're talking about harmony, uh, just we were talking about uh the fact that it's you know it's the, the way you have to think about harmony is very different um than if you're writing on paper you know there's a kind of uh the the way that music is the pitch material is generated requires you to kind of put on a, a slightly more uh the, the sort of the hat of a computer programmer yeah, or the mathematics the formalist hat, yeah maybe and I certainly think the maquette is definitely a way of bringing it back a slightly more intuitive approach to composition, you know, where you can listen back to what you've done and adjust it in response. Um, but as you said, getting to that stage of where, where you can actually play back <laughs> something <laughs> is one of the, one of the problems. Um, I mean, I more or less kind of just started playing about, I mean, you can uh, bring in a, 
I, I more or less started with just a, a sort of a tone row and just uh, matrix and then just started pulling out uh, uh, voice or I think this is a chord sequence or voice objects um, and then throwing them into the maquette just to see how it would work. Um, <coughs> so I find the one of the issues with the as you you know as you find with the maquette whenever you change uh, the uh, the size of something it will actually respond to that within the maquette so it'll kind of whereas it was normally the kind of yeah, uh, so there's, there's resizing a, changes the tempo of it, the but then whenever um, one of the things that and, and, uh, Antonio was showing is the, the maquette to, pot, uh, to object where, you know, if you change it then to uh, a poly. So if I, mm, let me just evaluate. Well, actually, I'll just delete this. So if, um, you know, if I sort of evaluate that, um, and I just throw it back in. Uh, even even though I've changed it, it doesn't. Oh, it has changed it here as well. Oh, I didn't realize it. Here we go. I'm learning something new as well. <laughs> Very often when I've sort of changed things, it hasn't uh, adjusted it. Um, so is this not a sort of a rendering of the maquette. Yeah. yeah, I think so. But this is like one of the things that bugs me, for example, a lot is that this this uh, action of resizing, mm -hmm. for me, it, it's very imprecise often. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, one of the ways that I sort of got around uh, doing that was actually by resizing the so i for that you can sort of see in the voice object here mm -hmm. um, this is just the one that was sort of dragged and dropped in mm -hmm. then for the for these two i just adjusted the tempo yeah uh, and if you adjust it, it, it does it become shorter the, yep. the ah okay so if i uh, um i think these are the ones that i just dragged and dropped in uh, okay. so if you take if you just take a Take one and just throw it in. Um, oh, that one's 60. I need to go to the, the adjusted one at the bottom. Uh, yeah, so we can see there is one that's... So there's the same one yeah, that's yeah, been yeah. adjusted. Double, uh, double so we have, yeah, the, okay. the one at the original length. And then in here, I've just passed the literally two voice objects. I've just taken the, the rhythm tree and the pitch material and then um, adjusting the, the yep. tempo. And that will come out in the, uh, in the patch or in the maquette, sorry. So it's, uh, it's one way. I mean, sort of, it would be nice if there was a, the you know they do have a kind of a grid ah, option okay. if you want to get a little bit more precise about the placement it's still mm -hmm. not great <laughs> <laughs> um, you know and then you've always got to kind of evaluate it before you do anything the this button at the top will resize it so that you get a kind of uh let me see if I can just draw. So this sort of little resize button will, um, I find that quite useful um, for place, you know, when you're kind of, if you've got kind of big patches and you sort of get lost in the. Uh, where, where is, ah, this one on top. At the top. So yeah, you have the kind of the, the sort of the, 
you the eval just kind of just evaluates it all the time this kind of adjusts the the kind of the maquette window so that everything kind of fits in it um that's been quite useful yes, yes, yes. um and then if you you know oh, i can't zoom in uh so the let me clear that um so if you you know if you have a just take a random slice and kind of push it off and then click the eval you know you can sort of adjust your you can sort of see we're getting a lot of space now um overall um so that can be quite useful um the the one thing is you can you can add in wav files um i just took that that's just me saying i think this is a test from the from the estif testing thing that i did um so you can bring in wav files but then it'll only they only ever exist in the macat uh when you try and go to the exp, you know the poly and things it kind of just gets ignored um so it's uh it's it's kind of interesting i i sort of wonder if there's a way of maybe you know when you i put them a cat in a way that's kind of that can use um the audio or interact with it in some way i'm not sure uh one of the things i i didn't you playing it back or oh this just the whole thing no no i mean the, oh, the, the, the audio file oh it's um yeah it'll just say oh why am i not getting any sound uh this is a test yeah so it will it'll play back and then and it doesn't so what what do you mean alan what is this oh, uh, I, i'm sorry uh today i, I must leave now because i have sure. another meaning but no um um i'll try to send maybe either to send some information or put information on the page about the market or things like that uh, okay and That'd in in um, 15 days uh, next week mm -hmm. I, i will be there okay perfect so okay thank you very much i thank must you. leave bye Ciao. Thanks, good work nice thank you <laughs> so the well, i mean that uh you know because i've just dragged and dropped the maquette into the patch so we now have our well, in fact i'll make it very obvious by so if i open up the maquette and i just dump that uh voice bit right at the start mm -hmm. evaluate it and then paste it in my patch uh when i evaluate Ah, yeah, you will only get the. the I only get the MIDI, but you know, yeah. it's only. But that's it's, that's the fact that it's the between the symbolic and the. Yes. What you maybe could try to do is, in this case, if you want to have some representation of it, not necessarily playing mm -hmm. back, but why did you think of um, making it into an SD file? not using it as a sound oh. but using it as a symbolic representation of the sounds that's interesting i'm, I'm just thinking out loud i Please. never tried it but no let's let's try it now and see what happens <laughs> yeah um but um so you would need do you have the uh ilcom uh, libraries can you make I, a super vp uh i don't have the uh can, the libraries but it's i think I th it sh it shouldn't um it, it shouldn't be too bad because I can just throw in uh, you know it's just to see it re um represented yeah or or make with spear or something make uh I'm not, I know I I I mean I'll not uh I'll, I'll not bother tidying it up I think I'll just I'll, I'll just throw yeah, in yeah, yeah, just see, rough, rough just as a test of uh <laughs> let's see whether we can 
make this puppy do what we want. Yeah. Um, it was this one. Um, and then it's. Uh, can never remember. Oh, I don't um yeah but ah okay i mm. or it's a, it's a chord sequence maybe then i'm trying no, i'm gonna look back you over to, you need to have the without some some um either spear or super vp mm -hmm. it, yeah but this oh is export it yes sorry i'm being silly of course i need to actually make it a yeah, exactly. Um, but just make it from the full sonogram. Yeah. So it would it theoretically uh, just represent all possible sign tones. Uh, yeah, it's going to be... Yeah, it's not too bad. I suppose I could... I While I'm here, I probably could clean it up a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. Just... Uh, just do... Otherwise, you will have, will have a very conflated... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and let's just save that as test C. And now you should be able to make it at least a chord sec from it. Yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, no, as what if, is it? Uh, as if uh, dash file. As I remember, no, okay, no. without a dash. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, S. No, it wouldn't be that. Oh, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, there we go. Um, so uh, I'll just I'll see what I just that. as diff two chord sec, but I don't remember how. Let's you let's see if the the as diff file will go. Uh, maybe even. I work but it's just numbers, eh? as if it's just like uh, onsets and, and amplitudes. So uh, it won't probably. I I don't think it will render in the poly because it's not poly that it's not information that the poly can process. Yeah, I think you need to you need to now first to as if to court sec, and then try. Let me see if I can just see what happens. Doesn't even it doesn't even want to go into the uh no I don't think so. Uh so yeah it was uh step to court sick no or that you need to find in the menu. I have cool. sick. No, it's with uh with um with the uh, um the arrow something. Yeah. Uh, stiff. And down now really Oh I, I was right there, wasn't I? Uh yeah. Oh, markers of <laughs> the joys of rushing. Yes. There we go. Get rid of that. Right. So we can just, and I suppose. Court sake, uh, make a little court sake of it. What I do fear is that it might make the maquette. F I would say it's probably fine. It's fine. And um, at least for as a placeholder, it would be it would have some function. Yeah, and it's the kind of the same length. So let's see. I mean, it's... yeah, we, you will not hear any. No, I wonder if we can hear them side by side to see. No, that overlay. No, that that's I I did a lot of um, a lot of experiments and yeah, you can't actually hear them side by side. Sign tones. If you use sign tones, you can you can actually have a good um, a quick pretty close representation. Mm -hmm. But it's and and I actually saw that Murai, for example, he um, I think he has his MIDI out hooked up to a kind of a hardware synth. Mm -hmm. Like with with I don't know eight voices or something, so yeah. that he can. Um, I'm I'm using the I'm using sign tones from from Max usually, mm -hmm. and this yeah. is maybe actually something we would we could actually that be maybe interesting to build in Max yeah. 
a kind of sign tone playback which responds to the OSC playback. See, yeah, I think that's a great idea. I mean, I've been um, trying to get, uh, I've, I've been Actually, using I don't know RUD how... player to, to kind of yeah. get. To, ah, to kind it, of... Works. It, it works on Windows. I didn't know it even yeah. worked on Windows. That's kind oh, of yeah. It's great. Uh... <laughs> It's, it gives I, I, I tend to more and more prefer sign tones actually. It's it's not bad. I've got it uh, on the. Uh, let's move these out of the way. Um, like I, I've got it set onto the uh, Steinway settings, and it's 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 a lot nicer than the built-in MIDI. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's you know. If you gotta listen to the the kind of the MIDI player of I have no idea on on how that so I uh you know it gives you something that's it's more pleasing. Um yeah, yeah. and the and the 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 microtonality in the UDP player is a little bit more accurate as the feeling. Yeah. Yeah it is. It's uh, I mean this is all kind of perfectly in tune, but if I go to uh, actually, probably the yeah. If you take example, F, if we take this. Basically, it, if you quantize it to eight tones or something, then because well, I, I think, think now it's quantized on. I think on this will play. I think it should play back because the as yeah, or as like whatever you know, it's gonna be. I think I think I can't remember what this is set to. I mean, it's like introvert, uh, but it's it's pretty pretty close. Oh, sorry, I'm not on the, I'm still on the, on the terrible MIDI. <laughs> uh, so if I go to this. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, you get, uh, you get. Uh, you get a nice uh, hardy parch like. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, that's been, uh, that's been my kind of experiment. Um, I was wondering actually maybe I if I have some time because I've um I've uh, my my students have the exam mm -hmm. next week so I'm a little bit busy this week with the preparations but um I I will try to patch a sign tone player together which yeah. which yeah. um takes the UDP play out well that would be I think next um, well, we I'll, I'll chat to you about this kind of afterwards uh, because it's certainly, I mean, that's something we should definitely, you know, do if you want to. Yeah, yeah, we don't necessarily need to do it. I mean, the one, no, I no, I think we should. I think it would be a great recording to put up, um, you know, so anyone can jump on and be like an experiment then. It doesn't need to be signed on, it could be whatever, and can build their own little sequencers to play back their... Um, yeah. Yeah, Wham. because in a certain way, I think Max gives a lot of opportunity. I mean, you could in theory also like really develop a sort of sampler, mm -hmm. um, which takes, I mean, I've already tried to get uh, um, OSC information from Open Music into Max and that is super easy. Yeah. Uh, that's just setting up the ports, setting up the ports. Um, but then the playback stuff, of course, is a little bit more. You need to know Max a little bit to do. Mm -hmm. but no, I think we should. I can, I can prepare something for next time. That would be great. I know the um, the only other video that I think I've got planned is the libraries, um, like the talk uh, about how to actually get your own patch oh. or your own things in. Um, that's, that's definitely high on my <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean at the minute i've just been i'm, I'm it's taking a bit of preparation because yeah, uh, yeah. You, I, i've said this before like in because of open music is based in lisp and lisp you can do there's six different ways to do the same thing and yeah. I, I think understanding the code a little bit more especially you you've got to really understand the code a little bit better to to start building your own libraries and things like that because you re you're pro you are programming at this stage um at that stage and yeah, yeah, sure. under and especially one of the things i find really helpful is going 
into other composers' libraries and looking at how they've done things and yep. you, you can really unpack a lot of kind of yeah, what's yeah. going on. Um, but you, I think you need that kind of, uh, you, there needs to be a, someone to explain like what, what code is uh, pushing stuff into open music and what code is actually the, uh, the sort of the magic behind the music type yeah. of thing. But um, that's it. We'll, we'll get back to my cats now. <laughs> yeah, I, it for the next time. I was actually researching a book that I have here while you were talking. Um, oh, yeah? Where I just found out that he's also, you know, Gerino Mazzola? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently in this book that I have here in front of me, he's talking about the market. So um, while you enter your as if object, mm -hmm. I'm going to check. Um, What's the title of the book? Is it? The Topos of Music. Top Music. Oh, so look at that. Um, but that's, uh, I, sh I should probably touch on also just briefly. Yeah, but he has like really cool, cool shit. <laughs> Wait, let me make a. Are you gonna? Can you share it, uh, the screen? And I can share the screen. Yeah. Let's. So let's see what. Uh, uh, wait one second. Let me just put it next to. Of course. To the others. Like, how does he do this? Wait. Uh, room share. Desktop. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, either that's a very old version of the Maquette. Yeah, yeah, I wonder the, it must be. But apparently, so I've just found out that there is a whole chapter on. Hmm. Yeah, I, it's... I I bought a book as a as a PDF. Mm -hmm. I mean, I th it's it's so hard to know kind of what's but it's again aesthetic really... kind of what's happening. Yeah, it's just again like nicely showing off what some stuff is doing, but I don't see a lot of explanation. But this upper thing is really weird i've never seen that actually yeah i wonder i wonder that, where that... that looks almost like a graphical scoring and yeah no it's definitely i mean probably the you know the output is probably you know it's it's probably very similar to the you know the object yeah i guess so. it's it's they kind of it doesn't really it doesn't serve a kind of it, it's a, a user interface kind of uh purpose rather than a yeah. open music doesn't care what it <laughs> if it's a yeah. block or color but uh no that's i mean that's neat examples here yeah it's a book was that was like on my reading list but i i, I didn't start it yet yeah, I mean, it's... Because it's I have the feeling that in the end, um, that in the end, um, there is this kind of relation between... Mathem I mean, the, the nice stuff that I've seen in open music usually comes from very well being able to formalize mathematically the musical problem that you want to attack. Yeah. So it's I mean, actually, even considering entering like a first bachelor in pure mathematics to kind of brush up or to to at least because of the feeling that that it's always in the end coming down to a good understanding of math yeah i think that's really because that's i mean it it is because of the lisp kind of grow, like every i mean really um most of the deep sort of things that are happening in open music is lisp 
it's just a, it's a kind of more um it's it's the way we're interacting with code that's different the actual you know anything you do in open music you could write as you know source code in lisp really yeah um, I know. I know. I know. and uh, that i think that's it's it's that bridge between the um you know the it's problem so it's problem solving really as a programmer but also as a composer and kind of um that kind of duality of yeah. using open music for composition yeah. but um just to quickly hit up just in case um so the because obviously most of the maquette uh, stuff with I've I've done is been kind of throw it you know I start with the maquette the new maquette object in the work um, uh, what's it called the workstation um, and having the patch separate and then really only yeah. bringing maquette in to export it but you know uh, if you, uh, I could just cut that. Um, if you dry, you to sort of get the real. I think uh, what Antonio uh, was saying that he prefers is you know the fact that you can use a, a kind of list of kind of uh, on set set values to. Um, I mean, even if I just take the same kind of st stuff that I've got here. Uh, I think, yeah, you, you gather it in a list, I think, and then you should be able to patch it in the... Even yeah. I think if you... Um, wait one second, go, go back to your previous screen. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, this you, one? Yeah, this one. Now, if you just instantiate a list you know how to do that? You push, I think, control, shift, and then you you drag it from the from the bottom uh, button from the list. Um, control. What am I doing here? Control. Let me, oh, let me share my let me share my screen. I will I will see. Oh, what, do you mean like just to make an instance of this of this list that you that you put together here? Uh, let me, I'll let you share your screen and you can tell me what you're. Yeah. So wait uh, one second. Let's try to do this. So let's say I have a bunch of, um, I just need to quickly gather some, some materials. Uh, Copy and paste a couple of patches. Under the... Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll just look here. Uh, yes. Yeah, here I have some stuff. Okay, that's, that will do just three of them. I have this one, uh, copy, paste. I have this <laughs> one, copy, paste. And I have a last one, copy, paste. Okay, so these are three elements. Have you, are you, you're not screen sharing? Uh, you... I'm sorry, yeah, excuse me. Uh, okay, now I'm. Yep. So I just gathered those three three things. Sure. Yeah, and so now I make a list. Um, I put them together. That's actually something which I often do, mm -hmm. just also to save a little bit of time and to should you. Stuff. And now if I drag while holding on Mac Command Shift. Mm -hmm. It just instant and it becomes this list, oh. which I can where I can just name like um, rhythm object. Right. I've and never. I've never. Oh, I can actually say to my maquette object, and then let's say. Um, so I think if I evaluate, yeah, so if I evaluate it, I have three voices and I can actually say, um, I suppose it will be like this, um, thousands, 
thousand. So two will become underneath or become at the same point, I think. And one starts after. I have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah that's the fun. Point. Let's. Okay, it does evaluate. Look at that, baby. <laughs> Yeah, so, and I think they are all inside. Um, what, I, yeah, it beca uh, yeah, I pushed evaluate probably too soon. I, th eh? I oh, think they are just all C objects. I was going to say, you, you, I don't, I think it's big because you didn't lock the. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> And then it's but, but it's okay. So yeah, like this, I think you even can kind of gather them together and then make make it the space a little bit more efficient, mm -hmm. or at least name it somehow that you know, like these are my rhythm objects. So usually, I find this kind of instant instantiation with with names mm -hmm. better to remember the material than because if you have like. A shitload of those, I tend to forget what they mean within yeah. your structure. <laughs> my my memory is not uh, not uh, good enough. <laughs> I, I I mostly just just encapsulate them in a sub patch. So that's I, I, interesting I, to see the kind of the control. Yeah, shift you can there. also just like it's. I I suppose on Windows it will be Control Shift. On Mac is it's Command Shift. You I, just push. Yeah, you can actually instantiate like different stuff. You can also just instantiate a tree, mm -hmm. or or the the pitch list. Uh, let's right. see. Uh, yeah, so this is just a bunch of chords, and if I put it here on the tree, I think I will just have a tree. Yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, that's really interesting. Quite. It's probably a nice way of kind of keeping the patches a bit more. Yeah, if you only need the 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 rhythm tree I, from this. Yeah, patch. I use it. I use it to transfer material from one patch into another. Like I make a yeah. basic material, and then I instantiate the ending result or elements from the process, and I put them so that I remember. Like, like because this you can give a kind of variable name, like. Yeah. Uh, basic uh, process uh, uh, like rhythm phase one mm -hmm. or something. and like this you can start to think of them as variables yeah the only thing is obviously they don't um, if you if I change now something here it won't relate back to the original yeah Yes, of course. It, it, it becomes a separate entity. It's just for me to keep. I'm 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 an I'm an extreme nerd when it comes to keeping the structure clean and and uh, and and transparent. No, that makes a lot more. Se it makes a lot of sense, and you know, especially if you're, you know, what's the point in having a voice object? Yeah, it, it for. Uh, and I mean, that's probably, you know, a lot of the mess in my patches. Um, like, 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 um, and I have the feeling that in a certain way, this transparency makes you also write better music in the kind of, in the same way that, or in like a little bit comparable to not writing, writing clean and, and good counterpoint. <laughs> Yeah. or clean and good harmony mm -hmm. a good harmony exercise usually also is like it's it's really transparent and yeah. and like like elegant and beautiful and and not too many notes and and i always had a feeling that good code good computer code is a little bit the same yeah it, it's very comparable to to what we call écriture and 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 that got me so i'm actually reading one book right now this there is this guy donald knut who is a real expert on on structuring computer programs and he wrote like a whole series of books on how to write clean and transparent uh, uh, code and i'm trying to adapt that 
those those rules a little bit to my open music uh practice. yeah I, it, it's amazing yeah the the amount of uh co you know because it is so close to coding a lot of the time yeah it's um yeah you, you i mean it's it's hard to um I, I think when you first come to open music you know the i mean the uh, I, the the, parent the endless parentheses and everything's qu it's quite difficult to unpack, um, mm -hmm. and I think that's you know some sometimes down to the the kind of the you know the the amount of kind of stuff that's in a patch that isn't used as well you know, mm -hmm. um, and definitely cleaning up the patches and code could make uh, you know tighten up a lot of the the work of being you know the actual understanding of yeah what's happening I mean, it relates indeed to the thinking process behind the, behind the structure anyway yeah it, it helps sort of emphasize this is the important thing this is what we're doing with it and blah 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 but uh yeah no i think that's uh that's good i wonder so did I, you ever try to make connections between objects in the maquettes uh yeah so i'm just working at a so we've got a patch here so if we tick um actually um so this is going to give me a number of Uh, if I just load in uh, voice, hmm. no, so it needs to be a second patch. So you can instance or you can add Wait, in. Are you through the screen again? I, or right, I, I take I it. I yeah, I'm seeing. Yeah, it's okay. Cool. It's, so uh, I'm just gonna test something out here. Um, so if I just put a input that, and it's the Like yeah, this is the what you see in the maquette if you if you evaluate it. Yeah, so if I get that. Ah, okay. Yeah, so as I understand, you can like and it should patch it should. which generates the material, and yeah. then put in another patch which maybe will will. Uh, See, display the, the results yeah and so if i because i've got these yeah okay two, and this, how come how why are this. they different S because in this patch i just it's plugged into a matrix and i ah, put okay, it just random to random. Yeah, yeah okay i see so in the the make matrix i didn't see the the random object sure uh yeah so it's just the you know if we look at our listener here it's just a big list of all the uh, matrices and then it's going to randomly pick one yep. and then because i can able to sort of copy and paste this we can so out of curiosity how do you use a lot of random stuff in in your music no not really i would be more uh, I would work out more what I'm doing. It kind of depends. Um, whenever I'm experimenting and I just want stuff to happen, I will use sort of random pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's especially for pitch. I find it's it's quite useful because um, yeah. rather than listen to that C note repeatedly, yeah, <laughs> you're, yeah, yeah, you know, when you're trying to do yeah, it, yeah, completely yeah. understand. Uh, so if I if I sort of know the kind of the shape of the phrase that I want to do, I'll kind of maybe just kind of do make a little patch that will draw something similar. So I get an idea of the kind of the shape, but uh, 
you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like by step, you know, you first all kind of work with rhythm and then using random pitches to kind of fill in the yep. sort of stand-ins. And then I will use the actual go into some sort of uh, pitch structures, ideas of how I'm going to do stuff. And uh, I'll give that it's a go. It's interesting to hear this type of, of the way that, that, that someone else is, is making this process because I'm, I'm um, like, I, I, I suppose you saw the piece that I sent you the, the recording of my, of my song, of my songs. Yes. On YouTube. Yeah. So this is, this is only my Opus three. So I'm, I'm, uh, I, I don't have a lot of composition experience yet. Um, I've been researching a lot, um, and obviously, since I improvise, I, I, I'm pretty okay with. I mean, I mean, I'm used to creating musical structures, but this whole process of choosing, like, I'm gonna first start with rhythm and then put in pitch and stuff. This is some, just interesting to hear how other people are are approaching this. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's always um, uh, a kind of a step in the, you know, um, it's, it's very much just like, uh, the idea for kind of a workflow, you know, we, you start sort of start uh, very much kind of, um, I have like a notebook that I'll write little ideas down, very sort of abstract ideas that, could, that I can turn into pieces. Yeah. Then it goes into open music where I'll kind of work that's, on it. It's very similar to the way I work myself. Up, up. I think, I think it's a, it's a, it's, I think it's a system that works and I think a lot of people do this. I and see. then from, from open music, um, one of the things I'm struggling with is uh, getting it into, I kind of go into Sibelius and then, oh, okay. Yeah. Then from Sibelius, I kind of very rough kind of, get the bare bones of that yeah. and and then I actually move it into Adobe Illustrator where I kind of really kind of because uh, Sibelius is terrible <laughs> 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 and it's uh, every other freaking uh, you know it's I always think whenever you have uh, you know I mean as, as much as I think all those kind of like Finale, Sibelius, Dorico it's um it's written for uh, it's always much of a muchness all everything can look the same and i think um trying to get back to sort of you know the the handwritten scores that you you know you can see um you know there's so much uh craft and art and i think that you yeah, know I think you hand that to a player it's gonna it it's it means a lot. Well, look for me. It would mean a lot more than here's a Sibelius PDF of the piece. Yeah, and I I I have the experience that you tend to write it down differently when you do it first on paper. Yeah, well, I, I, that's why I like to have sort of open music for getting I you know getting the piece. I mean, there's only so much you can do in open music. There's only so much you can do in Sibelius. Yeah. And there's only so much you can do in uh, Illustrator. And it's kind of like taking what I need from all of them yeah, yeah. One, so that I can make the, the piece that I want. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that's definitely, I think that should be another video that may be moving from, I mean, with the, with, I think, you know, having the OSC as a, you know, um, player in Max, you know, taking stuff out of mu open music and into something else. Because I know a lot of where people. I actually, yeah, that's where where I really, I'm. I mean, I'm now really working in my editor that I made in Max with this Contender library, because because it actually it allows me really to have a very. I mean, I can I can basically mock up kind of lachen on stuff mm -hmm. yeah but it, it also relates to a bit my philosophy on composing um that i mean i was never 
attracted to this idea of using, for example, extended techniques for their own sake as a kind of I, yeah. I understand why maybe in a certain period in history that was necessary to do, but I hear so much pieces where they are just used for the sake of being used. And this is something which, which for me, the discovery of the music of Griset was very important mm. because um, I had the feeling that for the first time I found a composer for whom these extended techniques were just part of a large sonic palette, but they were there because they served a function within the musical yeah. narrative. Or absolutely, I think. I mean, I, I think it's important about uh, to to discuss the the problems as well with uh, with some of that music. I mean, personally, I any pieces that I've written sometimes with extended techniques, where you know, uh, you kind of, you you always write the piece that's uh, once you've uh, that just abuses an extended technique because you've just learned about it. <laughs> yeah, I never wanted to do that. Was actually that. So I was half of I was half a year in a composition course, and half a year I was just fighting the whole time with my professor because exactly I didn't want to do that. And I remember yeah. that I that I that he asked me. I, I I did some tonal stuff, songs with piano and voice, just very simple. Mm -hmm. And it was like, no, but you don't write like this anymore. And 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 just write something on paper for next week. And 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 think of think of like um just just go all the way. And I just put like I I, I went kind of Jackson Pollock on the paper. Mm -hmm without any musical meaning for me. And, and I showed the paper, so it had just like all kind of note figures. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I was thinking like, I'm, I'm going to just like mimic some, some, some Boulez-like rhythms and stuff. And he was looking at it and he said like, yeah, now you're really making progress. And I was like, fuck you, do I? <laughs> and and, and uh, I, it was really frustrating. No, I, um, you know, I think that's, um, I think that's uh, uh, quite, I think that's the experience of, a, of um, a lot of people sometimes if you're trying to uh, find your own kind of compositional voice for things, yeah. it's, uh, you know, I, I think it, finding the right teacher is also, <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah yeah and and i mean at, at that point also um i i didn't have a lot of um how to say i didn't have a lot of choice because um my family was was not in a financial mm. financial possibility of extending my study so i finished my piano degree and i went to working as a teacher uh, mm. which is but but then afterwards like i started really composing from since i'm like, I don't know, 27, 28, something, mm -hmm. um, which is about uh, a small 10 years ago. Um, yeah, no, I think it's, I, I mean, I, I've i noticed it's become slightly, I, I mean, I think it's the, the kind of old guard of, and the kind of the cliche almost of kind of the, anything that's not atonal is wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I've noticed that is, um, anyone who kind of any professors and things that kind of do that anyone who's younger now especially kind of has a more open mind that, uh, much more open mind i think especially with um you know, especially with electronics being introduced yeah. into into the well, that was actually concert. it's funny that you say because that was my that was my kind of my path to a certain uh to uh, the feeling that okay there is stuff that's happening that i can relate to i discovered like i mean i discovered vagione and acousmatic music mm. and that became a huge uh, like eye opener and and kind of i'm i'm trying for the moment also to make to compose my first real acousmatic piece um so with very little references to traditional musical materials uh, or instrumental materials but it's based on a prelude of the bc so it, it so just to keep the structure but to 
to rework it so that it works with uh, and there i think also I'm, I'm still figuring out how um open music can be of any use um i'm trying for example to right now this is something i'm actually in the in the in the process of, of finding a solution i've have some recordings field recordings of rain mm -hmm. and i'm trying to figure out how to analyze them in such a way i mean you cannot it there is little sense of making a as if of that um because you're not interested in um in sign sign tone information you're not interested in partials but so to make a good analysis so that it gives me a kind of stochastic rhythm which this rain is representing mm -hmm. yeah but this is this is where i feel that um this is like the top of of my programming level at the moment. i mean i feel that i struggle both in a conceptual and in a programming way um just to make the choice like what do i what do i need to find out of this rain sample then how can i suck it out which <laughs> which um which transformation from concrete to symbolic yeah. do i need to do i need to perform and then to get this information in open i think once i have this i think implementing it in open music will be mm. probably pretty okay yeah i mean the that's one of the things is like the the problem solving is a, a big aspect yeah. of yeah, especially using i mean it's i mean it's the same in max and other you know yeah, yeah. and anything else and, and super clutter, you know, anything that's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, you're taking an idea and transforming it or trying to draw the right information. It's, it's a, pr it's a problem solving exercise. Yeah, exactly. I've exactly the same experience, but it's, uh, it's definitely the, you know, the learning curve, I think between, you know, open music, Mac, all these things, it's, it's all different and it's, they all do different jobs better than others. And I've certainly found open music is more, um, certainly the way I use it is better for me at getting a score or, you know, musical structures that, you know, very maybe old fashioned of kind of pitch structures, rhythmic structures, formal ideas. Um, and then using that to then, and that's probably reflected in the way that I work. The fact that I go from open music to notation software, you mm -hmm. know, is, uh, definitely influences the, the things that I use in open music and the, the different functions and objects. Um, yeah. and if, we're, if I was to go, you know, to, from open music to max, you know, I would be using a different world of things possibly. And. Do you, do you sometimes um, put stuff that you already made in Sibelius back in open music and then still extract stuff out of it? Have you no, ever? Less, no. I think at the beginning, um, I sort of experimented with like getting MIDI, you know, putting stuff, MIDI files into, from one to the other. I'm sort of watching how, you know, it kind of, um, it's kind of interesting to see, um, well, I mean, one of the one of the things I find with open music is that it's very easy to write like Fernieho style rhythms <laughs> without like without I think without giving it the correct um, sort of space to or consider with without giving it the correct consideration. Yeah, yeah, because very easy him, to just for him it relates very much to the other aspects of of the yeah. music, I think. And I think it's that that was one of the things at the start that I felt um, in my kind of use of open music. I kind of, how, how do I deal with this, uh, not really a problem, but this aspect of using open music. Like I'm getting these rhythms that are sometimes fine, sometimes insane. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a very interesting discussion because um, um, I've studied Fernio a lot 
in the last years. And I'm still not sure. I mean, I have, because I'm an improvisator, um, I know many of the things that he writes, you could also write in a different way. Of course. And the problem is a little bit, I have the feeling that I guess he got a lot of critique, but but people who tend to like his music also tend to be very, very um, sensitive when you start on discussing his his methods, critically discussing his methods. With all respect, because there are some pieces that I really also like a lot, but I'm... I really wonder, and and I have a lot of friends in the jazz um, in the jazz world, and sometimes they comment when they when they hear certain phrases or when I listen to them. I sometimes have the feeling that the exactness of his notation also causes a little bit of um, loss of spontaneity. And there is this, there is this very, um, well, it, it relates a little bit to the question of mathematics. Like when you, when you describe, for example, an accelerando or, or like a tam, 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 tam like this, yeah. either you can say to the, to the performer, like do it, you can, you can give the recipe, like do it like this and, and leave it, leave it um, unexact. Or you can go the Fernio approach and, and exact it out. And I think both of them have, have a purpose or both of them have a, have a plus size, a plus plus element mm -hmm. and a negative element. Yeah. And, and, and this is something where, where um, I, that's where I actually refer back to, to writing it out on paper because I have the feeling that when I write it out on paper, I, I go to the process of meditating. Should I leave this exact or should I make it, or should I leave it indeterminate with a recipe or should I um, make it really precise? Yeah. I mean, I've had this, I mean, I've had the same, I still have the same, you know, still kind of go through. I think for me, it, it came down to, what best serves the piece yeah. and what's, uh, you know, what is, I mean, for any who's writing music with a very particular aesthetic and uh, ideology. Yeah. And yeah. I think, That's you know, I mean, I, I understand. Require, yeah. Did I think read, uh, the books of Klaus Stefan Mankopf. Yeah. 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 I've got, um, I've got one of them, the facet, facets of the second modernity. I think that was the, um, I, I think he, uh, I think he has very good arguments, but you feel there. Uh, that's my opinion, my hum, my very very humble opinion, of course. But with Mankop, you, I, I, I tend to find that you notice the ideological element. Yeah, but I think that I think that's, that's also okay. true. That's, that's yeah. good okay but there i have the feeling like okay but this is kind of a discussion like you would have on on socialism and and, and liberalism yeah in a certain way they both aim for happy people but they just go a different route in getting yeah there. but I, I think it's also you know um you know the works you know if you look at a piece by john cage you know i think it's you know the ideology and the is, philosophy is that's right in there. front yeah, and, you know, I, I think, but I think it's, I, for me, I think that's very important because when you, yeah, you know, absolutely, that's all we have to hand a performer. And, yeah. you know, if you're lucky enough that your music lives. And, and it's something which I, I find that this, I mean, outside of this, uh, of the, of our upper music study, but I'm, I'm actually looking for other people who are willing to discuss this ideological element, um, kind of as a sort of music philosophy done by composers, not mm -hmm. by philosophers. Um, because I have the feeling that it, ref that it, it has a lot of 
influence on my writing on on for example choices to work certain material out or not i tend to i tend to have a lot of ideas and i need to filter a little bit in what what i work out and what not and and um and there obviously instantly I, I, a certain form of ideology ideology starts to to play a role somehow i think you know the I think it affects everything that we do in life, not just music. And I, I think you can't, yeah, I guess, you can't escape it. And um, maybe, maybe it has to do with the fact that I've been basically working the last 12, 13 years, mostly just here on my desk and, and studying a lot and, and producing very few pieces, mainly just studying mm. techniques and repertoire. And maybe it's just, at this point in my in my writing uh, evolution, that that I kind of that that I'm thinking a lot about it. Maybe it will. Maybe from the moment that I have a lot, I have some more pieces performed, for example, it I will I will have a bit more relaxed. Uh, I don't know. It's not relaxed. It's not a, the right term, but but um, but no, yeah. I it's just. Um, it relates to my to experiences from my studying years, and so in that way, it is kind of uh, relevant for me. Uh, I mean, I think it's a it's a type of you know politics that's in music, and I think it's it's also in performers as you know. It's yeah. we're working with you know there are performers who um, will will you know uh, who will you know engage with music that's kind of complex very you know yeah sort yeah. of very complex music um and it, and others that just it's just not their thing they just they don't do that and you know will react very strongly to it yeah um and i think that's 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 a part of the as a composer is working out who you want to work with <laughs> yeah, <I> guess. yeah. <laughs> who shares your vision or who doesn't and and also i think um engaging with people who don't share your vision you know go, you know yeah because you need also the other voices i mean that's very important i think yeah if everyone started writing the same it would be stuff. fucking boring <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. the, I'm, I'm actually I'm, I'm in the I'm in the process of of thinking. I'm I'm dreaming of a kind of organization that would work more with amateurs, mm. like the idea, the concept of sitting together with an amateur musician, and like for one month go over like the crazy stuff that has been done in the 20th century, where maybe some stuff is too difficult. And maybe some techniques this amateur performer will maybe find interesting, some not. And use that as a kind of constraint framework um, to kind of write a piece together, maybe more than, than uh, just me sitting at the desk and then looking for performers. Yeah. And, and I'm going to try to get that a little bit working, but because I have the feeling that it might be a very very fruitful very very interesting approach no, because it, it it will for example it will forbid you from writing pieces with strings and helicopters yeah. because the amateur player won't have access to a quartet of helicopters yeah but it will it will give very creative very interesting creative challenges i think i hope i mean, I mean i've one of the things that i find is you know it's 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 so i mean it's kind of one of the best parts of being a composer is that you get to work with people yep. you know you have to go out and it's quite a sociable yep. uh, um, thing to do but i think you know you also i've worked with musicians who I, it was very much a collaborative process and mm -hmm. you know skype emails whatever you're kind of able to kind of have much more of a back and forth and then other times you reach out and you kind of go, let's try and set up a co collaborative thing. And then you don't hear from them <laughs> <laughs> before the concert and they go, oh, where's the piece? And you're like, uh, here it is, but we haven't, you know, you kind of. Uh, yeah, 
easy. You've been ignoring my emails for like the last two months. <laughs> And now a month before the concert, you decided to sight read the piece and tell me yeah. <laughs> something needs to change. And, you know, <laughs> I, it's you, get, you, get, you get everything. And uh, that's part, I mean, I, I enjoy it. Of the, of, the, of the, yeah, I guess. I guess. Right. Yeah. Um, so did we cover everything? I mean, I think we covered as much as we can do with Mikel. <laughs> I I don't know. Yeah, uh, I know there is a lot more about this temporal object shit. Um, yeah, in the self object. I mean, it's something yeah, this, that I've this never... Self and stuff, I've, I've, but I don't understand it. I don't see where where it comes in use in in making the stuff. Yeah. I wondered if it was maybe just about the placement within the macro in order to kind of um, avoid, like uh, Antonio was saying, where you refresh some, you know, when you add more in, oh, yeah, yeah. you can lose things. I wonder if that's maybe the that fix. Uh, like, uh, let's see. Because you have this kind of function somewhere self. Um, and if you right click and then the, let me see, well, the documentation for it is self object uh, offset of a box in its container maquettes. Where did you, where did you find that? So I lit, I just right click and then temporal boxes and that's where i got the you know the temporal art i oh, yeah, 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 exactly yes, yes there's yes. lots of stuff yeah, that's yeah. what i mean yeah and then i just uh, i'm reading the documentation on it um but it's not very clear because i've seen this self object in patches from Murai, but i don't remember now exactly where but i'm pretty sure i've seen it so a box representing an object inside a maquette. Temporal boxes can refer either to their objects, patches, signs, to internal maquettes. So, yeah, I think it's position and box in the vertical axis. I think it is about um, more or less getting the sort of putting something in a position in the box and or you know in the maquette and keeping uh, it there um to kind of avoid yeah. so apparently it is about retrieving some information right maybe it takes its position in the maquette because if you're time stretching something ah yes it really you know, yeah, I, it it reads its own position in the market. Yeah, that's why it doesn't have any inputs. Maybe that's, you know. Yeah, because it just refers back to the outside, to the market where it is placed in. Let's see whether we can get that done, whether we can make that work. So sure. that means that we have a patch here. Um, ah, oh, look at that. <laughs> Good way. Pure magic. <laughs> so when you make a a patch in a maquette, it'll automatically. Yeah, and it will probably say like, "This is me, and this is where I start." Yeah, yes. look at that. Totally yeah, exactly. Corresponding. And what is this seven? What is this one? Um, if you click the click on the object and click D and get the documentation, I think I was that's what I was looking at, and it was. The extension, ah, the duration of the box. So now it's about nine to 16. Let's make it a lot smaller and then the number should be a lot less. You need, you need to evaluate it first. True, thanks. Yeah, wow, go. that's actually pretty cool because that's that means that you, okay, yeah, the color, that's usually not so relevant. What are the other parameters? 
value of the box. That's probably the temporal value of, let's see if I put a, a chord sec in. Let's drag something, let's copy paste something from here. And let's make it a temporal out. Uh, so that's, I need to evaluate, obviously, block it. Uh, changes the yeah, size. now it's it's the size of the. Uh, wait, let's see. Yeah, yeah, it gives the. Okay, but I start to see how you can actually create connections. Mm -hmm. Free store. That's okay. One patch, absolute value. Hmm. What is this? Reference objects. Oh, yeah, it's just saying to what it is relating. Yeah. This last one. Such as producing such an art to internal markets. Yeah, because I think actually it's true that can't you put a maquette in a maquette? Yep. If okay. you, you drag a maquette from the... Ah, from the outside. So I need to make one here. Uh, maquette. And I do like this. Yeah, exactly. And then you can... So you have like a maquette within a maquette. Yeah, but I'm, I'm actually working a lot in this, in this kind yeah. of... Pattern. Yeah. Like, like, um, like, for example, I picture, uh, because if you, I don't know how well you're aware of, of the acousmatic theory. No, um, no, it's not something I've really delved into. It's, it's working a lot with uh, what they call in French, the objet sonore, the, the sound object. But this can have all, I mean, this is not per se one sound. It mm -hmm. can have like a, it can be a kind of they have two main main terms that are important. It are is the séquence de jeu, like the the playing sequence and the objet sonore, and like for example, you can have a granular object, and then obviously that will last some x amount of time. Yeah, and so for example, if I would make a granular object, I would maybe make a maquette in a maquette and then put patches here that make this granularity happen and then just evaluate the maquette on itself mm -hmm. and like this again it has to do with this obsession with getting stuff clean <laughs> i i think i need to see a psychiatrist in the future <laughs> Finish composing and then you can see the second. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyway, um, I see it's already 20 past two. Okay. Yeah, I think we've covered, I mean, that's a, I think that was a good discovery um, right at the end there. Um, you know, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we learned a little thing again. Yeah, uh, I mean, let's see, maybe if we find some scholars, some um, subsidy, some, <laughs> uh, some uh, funding. We can ask Mr. Mirai to go <laughs> to to make a Zoom with us together. I don't know if we can afford that. <laughs> well, I think we need funding. <laughs> a lot of funding. A lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, thanks very much for for your help. No, thank you. you know, maybe um, if we, you know, if we discover more, we can do like a, a follow up video, maquettes yeah. two point zero, and yeah. You know, I, th I think um, I'm certainly going to be Actually, experimenting um, a little bit. To give you a little heads up on my, because I'm, I'm still like one or two weeks busy with my, I, I teach um, mm -hmm. composition in the Conservatory of Antwerp in Belgium. Yeah. Um, and now uh, with the lockdown, all my exams are uh, pre -po like post put earlier. So I have yeah. two weeks that I'm a bit busy. But afterwards, um, I was actually planning to to make a YouTube tutorial on my Max editor. 
Oh, that'd be really great. I have like some people um, that I got to know that are taking a lot of interest in it. And mm -hmm. I would be, I think I would really love to share all the patches, but it needs a little bit of um, explanation how they relate and how you need to use it. Um, and I was, so I was thinking actually the nicest thing to do to show this a little bit is to compose a little piece in open music that generates really rough material mm -hmm. so like maybe to to make a little kind of um rough maquette of the piece and i was actually thinking i should do it i should just like take start from the murai library the yeah. And so my plan is actually to like, maybe for the next session, it will be too early. Mm -hmm. Like within, within the, the one after in four weeks, I think I will be also already be able to present like a little bit of this first sketches of this, um, of this um, Tristan or, or this, this library composition. Mm -hmm. The idea is in the long term to to make a real piece out of it, but but um, that will be for at least for not in the next two years. But I was thinking a good preparation is just taking a, a few of these ideas and then make a kind of little. I uh, I suppose you you know what I mean when I say écriture. Um, yeah, like the equivalent of a harmony exercise. Yeah. Um... And, the idea would be to start from um, the idea of reflecting harmony. So you have a chord and you have an axis mm -hmm. and all the three notes project on this axis or on, on different notes of the axis and you get microtonal reflections. And this was a bit, a little bit a starting point. Um, and then some analysis of, um, of distorted um, sounds, like distorted multiphonics, distorted, um, well, just using a distortion plugin in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in a DAW and gather all these materials and then just building a piece out of it and, and mocking it up with the uh, content uh, uh, edit uh, sample library. So I'll try to, to, in four weeks or something, or in six weeks yeah. to, prepared like the first stage and then I can make a little bit of a of a, of a little sub chapter of yeah you know. no the, I mean the the things we've got I've kind of got sort of bookmarked to do is the now the the OSC player you know that you um yeah. to try and do something with that you know building a something with max and I don't could you it could also maybe work in pure data as well yeah but, sure. So, sure you know just for anyone who maybe doesn't have Max. And yeah, or even Superglider, I think should be pos entirely possible. Yeah, maybe just some examples of that. Um, the, li the, the library videos and other- Yeah, other that's things. very high on my list. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll get that. I mean, we'll, I, I'll chat to you later um, yeah, in the cool. week and we'll that's see, that's you know, if you're, if you're up for doing the OSC player, yeah, I, I guess uh, in two weeks' time, in two weeks you know, time we could do I that can, video. Put quite some time in it, and, and I I really like to do this kind of max stuff because yes. it's it it just also keeping my max uh, chops a bit yeah, uh, fresh. I think that'd be really good. Then that will probably give me enough time to sort of get the building your like uh, your own library video yeah. together. I'll be able to go into sort of a real detail. Yeah, uh, about that, and then yeah, then we can look at um, like doing anything else after that. I think that'd be good. Yeah, I'll I'll just yeah. notify you whenever there's like, um, elements or kind yeah. of in a ready state, and I have something to show, like a little yeah. maquette. Yeah, I, maybe I will dive into. I will take it as a kind of challenge to see how far I get in the yeah. maquette before going to max. <laughs> Yeah, but it's cool. That's I mean, I, I'm determined. I mean, I'm really determined to get open music to do what I wanted to do. I and think not, it's the, not the, being the slave it. of the pre-programmed libraries. 
That's that's it. That's exact. That's a good. good (laughs) (laughs) Great. Well, I tell you what. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording now. So um, yeah, I'm gonna say again. Thanks very much for. Thank you, Alan. It's it's so. I I just say like it's it's super lovely. I've been exploring. open music for uh, 10 years almost in complete is- isolation mm-hmm. because I have no other I, I don't know of any other composers who are regularly using it in a, on a like more advanced level not just doing like a uh, little dodecaphonic I mean okay you're also doing dodecaphonic but you do a lot of other stuff I see but I mean like not just uh, using one pre-programmed uh, algorithm and then generate some notes um, so it's just fantastic to be able to talk to other people um, used to working with it. It's it's lovely. I mean the, the, I mean for a lot of these examples, I've I kind of pull on sort of twelve tone stuff just because it kind of generates different pitches. That's not really the type of things that I would write. Um, my pitch patches get very dense. So I feel like it, you know, it's I I yeah, kind of would be also interested to if you would be if you f- f- would feel okay to do so. Of just course, to share to ch- share one example of of how you practically approach it, like how yeah. it how it plays a practical role in your in your writing. No, I absolutely be. I I should um, go in and yeah, I'd be happy to do that at some stage to pull up a patch and because I have the feeling in. like also Antonio is. He's pretty knowledgeable. He knows enough. I mean, it's. I don't think we need to. I, I know you said your first idea was to make first basic stuff, but I think at least the three of us we have yeah. enough experience to start talking about more. No, I definitely. It was. I mean the. I mean the idea of this has kind of, you know, changed and moved. I mean, for me. Um, I'm always aware that I don't want to make it, I, I, you know, to sort of at least give people a kind of a yeah, jumping in so. point so that they can, and then also, because you, you also want to discuss the more complicated. I mean, we did dip into the Lambda stuff, which I felt was kind of verging on probably the more advanced side of things. Uh, I, I felt but, that was really interesting. I do. I think there's definitely probably... So actually, we can think of a Maquette 2.0 and a Lambda 2.0 maybe. Yeah, I mean, the Lambda Lambda stuff's interesting. I mean, whenever, I think whenever you're building a library, um, you know, a lot of that, it kind of is part of it, but you're also able to kind of just take out the whole Lambda function because you're writing your own functions. You don't need to, you know. What I I did up until now is um, I quickly reshare for the last, but then I need to go. Yes, I know. We should. I, I I did write some some of some of my own functions uh, here, mm-hmm. like um, like this one is actually quite quite handy, concatenating a list of voice objects one after the other. I yeah. saw some horrible patches from other people, just like two and then another. Two. <laughs> oh, I'm just I'm guilty of that. And I find a way, uh, yeah, it's with the Lambda concatenation. Lambda con- yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it's amazing that um, that there hasn't actually been built already into it. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I think it's, uh, you know, writing, uh, I, um, I think that's going to, definitely the, the Lambda, or the, the kind of the talk on, building a library is going to be, I imagine it's going to be quite dense and quite theoretical, um, especially because we're just, it's going to be pure code talk. Yeah, uh, but I, I think that would be interesting because I was exploring a little bit the patches that that we did on, on the Lambda session. Yeah. And then from the moment that you start writing in this kind of list box, mm-hmm. um, so I, I kind of got stuck like, what if now this here is becoming a multi-line function? I got a lot of errors yeah. when trying to 
I don't know why that was, but but um... it's. I also find it quite um, hard to write more complicated functions in Open Music. It gets quite hard. Very often, I I use Emacs. Yeah. Um, as a you know a text editor for really working with Lisp stuff um, for writing functions and whenever I'm kind of going under the hood with a lot of this stuff that's where I would do that playing about because you can have your Lisp dot Lisp file and your wrapper yeah. um, uh, and you can look at little bits and deep it's a, a you know the debugging is a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, how how do you integrate them in Open Music? You just well, once you've got like the file, it's import here. You can. I mean, I've done that before. If I'm being lazy, or then you can. Once you've got a library set up, you can then. Ah, yeah. Put the, you can then just put that into your library. Yeah. That folder for the library. You know, put putting the code in the right place so that then I can call it in Open. Yeah, Music. yeah, yeah, yeah I see. Um, you know, it's that'll be that'll be that whole discussion for that video. I think, uh, um, but I think I will have to just use. I mean, my plan was to only use Open Music for all the work, but I just think if you if you're wanting to write Lisp code and things, you know, there's only so far. You know, the Lisp, yeah. the OM listener and editor will really take you um but i would be really interested because i'm also um i bought um opus modus when it was really in beta yeah stage. and i've been playing around with it a little bit but i have the feeling that it's much more pure lisp i've been told about that i did look at it but i'm sort of unwilling to pay for something i don't know anything about yeah, and, uh, <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll be honest and um my apologies, dear makers of Opus Modus, but it is a very limited program from right. a musical point of view. It basically, it, it tries to be the Lisp equivalent of Lillipond. Right. And then to give you similar functions of Open Music, but it, it tends to come from a very weird idea that you first write huge amounts of notes and then go on to transfer them in an algorithmic way, which for me is a very like sort of counterintuitive. It would like be writing a piece in Sibelius and then importing it in Open Music. And I yeah. don't see myself doing that actually. But it I'll I'll show you quickly. It it looks well it's it's just a it's basically just a bit lisp editor. Um I need to open some workspace. Yeah. And I've been some doing some, some writing because it's a very handy editor to train Lisp. Uh, and so you get a lot of examples, but the code is, wait, no, maybe it's not here. Maybe it's another one. Uh, let me see. That is just, where are the tutorials? It has some tutorials. No, come on. These are functions. For you, probably this will look pretty, pretty familiar. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, here are the... Like, so this kind of this this kind of code i feel pretty comfortable doing um, but i think the library is still more complex but yeah. in, in that sense it would be good because it would also give me in open music uh, in opus modus more possibilities uh to yeah i mean it's um i i kind of i you know because i didn't get it i never i didn't give it much time to um after that Did you ever try op, um common music no i mean once kind of once i really kind of got using uh, open music like i didn't um i kind of it was it's there's so much kind of lisp programming you can do in open music i didn't yeah, really yeah. 
didn't feel the need to no to it's I'm, I'm just asking because i um i remember the time that open music was paying mm. so i remember researching and i worked in open in pu double G, uh, pwgl for a while mm. um that was actually my first experience with with lisp and, and algorithmic composition yeah and that kind of died out and open music got for got uh for free so yeah i i also didn't have more but i think it it as you say the moment that you want to do more complex stuff it kind of feels that you need a good grasp of lisp yeah 100 so, so i think it would be interesting to to go do it the hard way and still tackle that a little bit in in uh, and I, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely gonna gonna de delve into that. Um, it'll be interesting to see how many people watch those videos, but <laughs> you know, I think it's it's a, still an important aspect. Well, and on the other hand, we also have the Facebook group. They can also, I mean, if they don't like it or if it's too complex, then then they also can comment like, "Could you do this?" Or more, yeah, maybe I should. Reach nobody's out. complaining. I would just like just go on on our on our gut feeling and and do the stuff that we we find interesting. I agree. I agree. And I would say there there are some tutorials for really basic open music use. Hmm. Yes, I mean that's most ninety percent of the videos I think are that I've been. Yeah, but even I I just discovered a guy who who even did like kind of Fernio rhythm generation um, with some uh, with some Lambda patches as well. Yeah, I mean, I've been uh, using, uh, one of the things I want to try and do with the YouTube channel as well is kind of make little playlists of like yeah. all the other YouTube videos. Because I think certainly, I mean, the the little bits of Lisp video that I kind of linked to in yep. the last one, I think, video, I mean, that's really more programmy side of things. And, but I think so applicable to open yeah, music. I, I checked it out. It's really cool. <laughs> and he does crazy stuff with Lisp, my God. <laughs> and it's a lot of those things are so easy to do in open music. Like, like, yep. all the, like his video on loops, like is pretty much, you can do that no problem like in a in a lambda function you could do that like it's really the amount of um the possibilities are really really endless um right i really we've got to we've got to finish this <laughs> yeah yeah let's uh but let's keep in touch and uh yeah i'll speak to you later in the week and thanks very much again for sharing and and see you soon see you soon yes bye, bye.